one death. That is the catchphrase of snipers who have been using firearms for more than a century and are therefore revered and feared all over the world. The sniper revolutionized combat by enabling the elimination of crucial targets with previously unheard of precision. These sniper facts, whether they're bullseyes or long shots, are a certain way to find out more about these surgical military operatives and the weapons that make them so lethal. The term sniper was first used in the English language by British soldiers invading India in the 18th century to indicate sharpshooting. It was borrowed from the act of hunting snipes, a type of game bird whose unpredictable flight patterns made it incredibly difficult to shoot. Around the same time, the name Sharpshooter, a transliteration of the German Scharfschutz, was adopted. An unknown shooter in Joint Task Force 2 of the Canadian Armed Forces presently holds the record for the longest documented sniper kill shot. An Islamic State fighter was killed by a shot fired from a distance of 3,540 meters during an operation in Iraq sometime in or around May of 2017. The previous record was set in 2009 in Afghanistan by British soldier Craig Harrison, who fired a kill shot from a distance of 2,475 meters. The Whitworth rifle is regarded as the first sniper weapon in history. It was created in 1854 and manufactured by British businessman Joseph Whitworth between 1857 and 1865. It was primarily utilized by the Confederacy during the American Civil War and had a 1,400-yard range, or approximately 1,280 meters, at which it could reach its target. Typically, bolt-action or semi-automatic sniper rifles are used. Bolt-action rifles use hand-operated systems to manually load and change bullet cartridges. Bolt-action rifles often have a simpler mechanism and are more dependable, accurate, and lighter than semi-automatic rifles, despite the fact that manual chambering lengthens the time between rounds. The Finnish sniper Simo Haiha has the most confirmed deaths of any individual. During the 1939-1940 Winter War between Finland and the Soviet Union, he is said to have killed between 505 and 542 men in just 100 days, albeit only about half of them were submachine gun kills, the rest by sniper. This works out to more than 5 men per day. Modern snipers are trained to move in a slow, deliberate manner that makes them exceedingly hard to identify. They work in extensive camouflage to blend into their surroundings. Stalking is a type of training that is intentionally harder than moving during actual operations. A typical sniper rifle can set you back between $8,000 and $15,000. If you have a lot of extra cash to spend and are really itching to give it a shot, however, you will need to have that kind of cash. For instance, the TAC-50, which broke the record for the longest kill shot, sells for $14,999, albeit it's not something you should try at home. Snipers frequently team up in pairs, one person seeing and the other sniping, due to the complexity of modern sniping. In order to guide the sniper from behind, the spotter frequently carries a stronger scope than the sniper. When conducting reconnaissance, the spotter generally assists with aim correction and alternates with the sniper on observation. Modern snipers use long-range shooting, which takes into consideration a number of possible issues with the trajectory of long-range bullets, including gravity, wind, and air pressure. Due of these considerations, long-range shooting has a sizable amateur sport following and sniping is far more sophisticated than simple pointing and shooting. Sniper rifles are made with accuracy and range in mind, and they have features that make them easier to use while also extending their stability and range. A telescopic sight, or scope, as well as heavier and longer barrels, may be examples of this. Francis Pegamagabo, a Canadian from the Shawanaga First Nation Reserve in Ontario, was the sniper who claimed the most casualties during the First World War with 378 confirmed kills and more unconfirmed kills. By the way, this surpasses the combined kill totals for the US, UK, and Australia during the conflict. Later, Pegamagabo would lead the Waysoxing First Nation as its chief. Today, he is commemorated with a statue at Perry Sound, Ontario. 
As much as video games and movies promote the idea of the skilled sniper taking down hundreds of foes by themselves, in reality, modern military snipers are mostly tasked with reconnaissance, that is, scouting the area and adversaries for tactical information. Soldiers in trenches during the First World War would construct papier-mâché heads to protrude and act as targets for enemy fire. The angle from which the sniper was firing would then be ascertained from the bullet holes in the fake heads, allowing for counter-sniping or bombardment. Additionally, the day dedicated to arts and crafts must have been a nice respite from the utter misery of trench life. It's already very astounding that U.S. Marine Steve Reichert once killed an insurgent from a mile away. The fact that his victim was hiding behind a wall, though, is even more astounding. Reichert made a good bet as to where his targets were, and the armor-piercing round took care of the rest. Two additional men may have been injured by the shot due to brick fragmentation. The snipers are trained at various locations to fire between heartbeats since blood flow can affect fingers when firing. Numerous counter-sniper tactics have emerged in contemporary military strategies as a result of the advent of sniper warfare. These seek to lessen the harm a sniper may do to an army, which can frequently be detrimental to both combat readiness and morale. By deleting or hiding traits that might normally identify an officer's status, the risk of harm to a chain of command can be decreased. In addition to removing rank insignia from their battle dress uniforms, modern militaries tend to forego saluting commanders in the field BDU. Before exposing themselves as potential targets for elimination, officers can take all necessary precautions, such as reading maps or using radios. The enemy sniper can be tracked down using friendly snipers. Defense forces have various options besides simple observation. These include using triangulation to determine a bullet's trajectory. Although manual triangulation of a sniper's location has been the norm up until recently, radar-based technology is now readily available. Once the sniper has been spotted, the defenders can try to approach them from cover and overpower them. The Robot Enhanced Detection Outpost with Lasers, Red Owl, project, funded by the U.S. military, employs laser and acoustic sensors to pinpoint the precise direction from where a sniper round has been launched. As sniper rifles are frequently very powerful and loud as a result, snipers frequently employ a tactic known as sound masking. This method can be used in place of a noise suppressor when used by a good marksman. Shot sounds are frequently covered up by extremely loud ambient noises like thunderclaps or artillery shells air bursting. This method is widely applied in guerrilla warfare, infiltration strategies, and covert operations. Snipers frequently employ relocation when faced with several targets. Snipers move covertly to a new place after firing a few bullets from one spot to prevent the opponent from finding them and mounting a counterattack. This strategy is widely employed by snipers to their advantage, resulting in an environment of confusion and chaos. Relocation is done in other, more uncommon circumstances to get rid of the wind element. Accuracy is essential to successful sniping, and this holds true for both the shooter and the weapon. Shot placement should be consistently accurate and within small tolerances. In turn, the sniper must employ the weapon to precisely place bullets in a variety of circumstances. The range to the target, wind speed and direction, the snipers and the target's altitude and elevation, and the ambient temperature are just a few of the variables that might affect a bullet's trajectory and point of contact. Over time, estimating errors add up and reduce lethality or result in a shot being completely missed. Snipers can zero their rifles in the field or at a target range. This is the procedure for adjusting the scope so that the bullet's points of impact for a particular distance are at the point of aim, the scope center, or crosshairs. To minimize the need to re-zero during operations, a rifle and sight should maintain their zero for as long as feasible under all circumstances. Military sniper training strives to impart a high level of expertise in stalking, observation, map reading, camouflage and concealment, and precise marksmanship under varied operational circumstances. Over several weeks, trainees generally fire thousands of rounds while learning these fundamental techniques.
There was for today. Thank you for staying with us. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel.